So yeah, Nature and Nurture, August 2022, our refresher webinar. And um, we'll start with a quick pause. If I can get it to go to the next slide. So just pause and kind of check with yourself. How are you? You can close your eyes for this if you like, but you don't have to. This is really just a quick minute or two pause to turn inward. Ask yourself how you're doing and notice what comes up. What thoughts come up when you ask yourself that question? Feelings. What's going on in the body? And as you notice what's going on in the body, you might notice the breath. So just take a moment to breathe slow and deep. And whatever has arisen from your inquiry, just allow it to be there. We're not here to fix anything. We're just really here to observe, to be mindful about it. So allow it to be there. We'll practice some of that later too. Continuing to breathe. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes if you've had them closed. And that's just a quick pause to get us started. To try to bring us to right here and right now. So just checking in, I like to check in with everybody before we kind of get into the meat and potatoes of the refresher. How's it going? What do you, what do you need? Anything? What would help? Um, if anybody wants to use the chat or speak up and you know, unmute yourself, but just curious to know how's your practice going? Are you able to find some time to do these practices? I know things change a little bit as we get into different seasons and the vacations and time off. It does for me, but how's it going for you? Anybody want to share a little bit? Well, uh, it's Jim. I, I, I have, um, I'm constantly in a tug of war between the past and the present. My mind typically for many years uh, has not been centered on the here and now. And especially professionally, I'm always thinking 20 minutes or a day down the road. And I'm also, um, you know, just looking back through the past and trying to consolidate what I've learned. And, and it's, it's really a struggle to going back and forth between the past and the future and trying to stay in the present. And, and that's my battle. And I, I think I'm getting better at it. But it's still a long road because, as I said, my mind is not programmed. Well, I mean, that's really the key. And, you know, typically when we're on autopilot, we are time traveling uh, to the past and the future, and we're not really in the present. So that's kind of what it's all about. So that's a good point because, you know, as we go about our day and spend time working and getting things done, um, you know, we have to do that. We have to be remembering what we did before, thinking about what's coming next, planning for the next project or whatever it is you're doing. So we're not saying with mindfulness not to do that, but when we practice on a regular basis, pulling ourselves back to the present moment, it can really help us to get less caught up in the what ifs and the unknowns. And so, you know, like you said, you're getting better and I'm sure you are because I know you do a lot of, a fair amount of practice. And I think that's really, again, the key. You've heard me say this a million times, all of you practice, practice, practice. And so, um, yeah, just keep, just keep doing it as best you can. And you'll notice it, I think, for me, I notice it more, as they say, as I go into different things going on in my life or vacation or, you know, doing different activities. It just, it just surfaces more 
naturally. It's in, in, in a more of a it becomes more of a second nature. So very thank you for a couple of great chats here. Still developing the habit of taking the break to practice. Yeah, I mean that's the key. If you can't take the break though, see if you can integrate it into what you're doing while you're doing it. Um, but really, th th that plus finding brief breaks you know this doesn't take a lot of time so that that is the trick um so here rose says good suggestion i do it every day in my car to and from work with guided meditation they place on the car radio i've learned to breathe take a moment when needed when needing to in stressful times i also remind myself that life is too short to allow negative the negative to steal my precious time excellent observation I am a much calmer person, and that's that's really such a wonderful tip right there. So, you know, I don't drive as much, but I also do it in the car, and uh, it's, it's not quite the same. Obviously, you're not sitting, closing the eyes, but it really can be quite a good place to do it, I find. So try it. Um, Lori says, I use them often. My challenging issue is ongoing, and these practices help. Yeah, well, good. I'm so glad to hear that and trying to work through the daily demons of a situation from last year. This definitely helps. Yeah, you know, the daily demon, the, the demons come up from a sit from past situations. And that's, I'm sure that's for, for all of us. And so, um, you know, that's the trick. Um, when you notice the demons and you get pulled into that past situation, you might notice that it triggers you, but just that's the mindfulness part. Notice what it does and then pull yourself back into the present moment. You can say to yourself, I'm here, I'm now, I'm not there, I'm not back there. I'm okay now, everything's under control right in this moment. And, um, and you can kind of recenter yourself that way. Another good one from Roberta, thank you. Um, grateful for the refreshers, yeah. It's, I am too. I mean, the, the monthly practice is really good. I walk once a week with my buddy and appreciate the support. That's an excellent thing to do. You know, find somebody to do it with. And um, body scan every night. So you have a good routine there with a good app, Insight Timer. And you begin your day for 20 minutes with a few friends. Excellent. That whole sense of connection has become so much harder. But, you know, we find different ways. So... Good for you, Roberta, that's excellent. All right, so thank you uh, for those. And please do feel free to reach out to me if I can help with anything, if you need any, I don't know, tips or suggestions. But um, I also like these refreshers. It makes me kind of think about, you know, what are some ways that I can present some information to hopefully help with your practice? And so today we're gonna talk about nature and nurture, as I said in the beginning. And so we'll have a meditation um, that's nature-based, and then we'll have a meditation towards the end that's nurture-based, taking care of ourselves. Because um, I think we can really easily, hopefully we can easily get into nature, but even if you can't in reality, <laughs> you can in your imagination. Uh, and nurture is you know, really remembering to take care of ourselves. Um, and so I'll have a good practice for that, I think. Bringing in the concept of letting it be. Uh, so we'll see how that works. So this here, let me um, get this started. This is a video, actually. And it's about a two-minute video of, actually, it's my, my mother's backyard in Maine, um, which I was there just sitting on the back with my iPhone <laughs> again filming this, so I'll turn it on. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit as the video's going. So um, just to kind of introduce the, the concept of how nature can be helpful. So just starting with this quote, we all know how good being in nature can make us feel. We've known it for centuries, the sounds of the forest, the scent of the trees, the sunlight playing through the leaves, the fresh, clean air. These things bring us a sense of comfort. They ease our stress and worry, help us to relax and to think more clearly. 
being in nature can restore our mood, give us back our energy and vitality, refresh and rejuvenate us. So that's a quote from a book called Forest Bathing, which is a Japanese concept. And uh, the author is uh, Dr. Quinn Lee. Um, and I don't I actually don't have the book, but I came across a great article. And I actually have um, that article if anybody wants it. But then I found some good stuff on the Greater Good Science Center, which is another one of the resources that I find very helpful. I get their newsletter on a weekly basis. The Greater Good Science Center is from the University of California, Berkeley. And they have an excellent podcast called The Science of Happiness. And it's all science-based, it's evidence-based. And they point out uh, there's a lot of scientific research showing that just a little burst of nature just noticing nature makes you feel positive emotions like awe and inspiration and makes you feel more altruistic and kind. Uh, immersing ourselves in nature calms our nervous system. It reduces cortisol, the stress hormone. It elevates vagal tone. And it's linked to pro-social tendencies like increased generosity, cooperation, and kindness. So that's from the Greater Good Science Center. And if you wanna check that podcast out, it's again, it's the Science of Happiness podcast. And they do every, um, every week or so, they do a happiness break. And it's a briefer, uh, you know, like seven to 10 minutes. And there's a couple of ones that, um, one is experience nature wherever you are and they lead you through a seven minute exercise. And the second one is how to ground yourself. And also leads you through an exercise that is a really uh, interesting grounding practice. So let me go to the next slide. And then the other thing to remind you is we have guided meditations on our EFR website. And you'll see a section on the bottom um, that has um, guided imagery. Um, and there's a bunch of... Um, well, there's maybe five or six different meditations, and I'll use kind of one for today, but there's one on the forest, the ocean, the mountain. There's one called um, body like a mountain, heart like the ocean, and mind like the sky. So you might want to try one of those. But for now, let's do one. Um, and we'll do one, and this is kind of the cool thing about this. You can do one um, anywhere. You know, you can, where do you want to go? You know, you want to go to the beach, you want to go to the forest, you want to go to a mountaintop, and you can really do this in your mind and with a meditation. So today we'll go to the forest. Um, and this is actually another photo you see here of um, a, a road up in Easton that I took on a bike ride with, uh, with my iPhone again. Uh, so... Let's just start by finding a, a nice, comfortable position, one that you're probably familiar with. And so take a moment to settle yourself, um, finding a posture that's relatively upright, where you can be alert and relaxed. Let your body relax and settle into the chair. Let your feet be flat on the floor. Let your hands rest comfortably. Just establishing a nice, stable, balanced position. You might even imagine the position of your body sitting here like a mountain, grounded and rooted. And we'll begin by also taking a couple of nice deep breaths. So breathing in fully, letting it out gently. And if you haven't already, close your eyes and take another deep breath. And as you exhale, you may feel yourself beginning to relax. Allow yourself to sink into the chair as you exhale. 
and slowly breathe away any tension. So you may imagine strolling down a path into a lush green forest. As you walk, you notice the sights and sounds, smells and feelings of the forest. All around you see trees, green ferns, grass and flowers. Take a moment to just take in the visual field in your mind's eye. Colors and shapes and textures, light and shadow. And you also hear soothing sounds. Birds chirping, twigs crunching softly beneath your feet, the wind blowing gently through the trees. Just take a moment to listen to the forest. You can smell the rich fragrance of the forest. Take in the fragrances. Sunlight peeks through openings, warming you. With each breath you take, you may feel a deep sense of peace and relaxation. You soon come to a stream. And you sit on the soft ground of the banks of the stream and put your feet into the cool water. You feel the warm sun and the gentle light breeze. As you listen to the water trickling through the rocks. You put your hand into the water and touch your wet fingers to your cheek. The water's cool and refreshing. You close your eyes and soak up the warm sun and feel as though you are floating. Relaxing deeper and deeper. You have no worries and are completely at peace in this place. When you're ready, imagine that you slowly get up, leave the stream and follow the path back through the forest. As you gradually exit this place, realize that you may return whenever you wish. And this path will always lead you to a place where you will feel relaxed and at peace. And so when you're ready, you can open your eyes as we finish that meditation. All right, so what did you think? Any comments? Wondering what that was like for you to kind of get away to the forest. Any thoughts about that? Reflections, comments? Yes, but I need it. Good. Good. Yeah, we may not be able to get out there in reality, but we can sure do it in the mind. Right on time. Good. Excellent. Recharge my batteries. Yeah, this can really recharge us, you know. Um, I love nature, bringing me such peace and calm. So you might decide to integrate some of this into your practice, um, whether you can get out there, you know, in real life or just do it. Uh, the, again, there's those meditations on our website um, and there's others. There's plenty of others. If you use some of the apps as well. So the next slide, we're talking about anxiety. 
I can get it to move. There we go. Um, and the reason I bring this up is not to make us anxious, but, you know, sort of a counterbalance of it, you know, but the idea that we can counteract it in meditation in some ways is an antidote to anxiety and stress. Uh, and we can do this to care for ourselves. Um, and COVID certainly has, as we've all heard, propelled the rates of mental health issues. Anxiety and stress are at record highs. We know this through our EFR numbers and through claims um, in the health system. But even in general, the, all the surveys are showing you know, that, that, that they're rising. And so we probably all felt with the uncertainty of, of everything that's going on in the world around us. Um, so what can we do to counteract it? Um, and so we're going to do another meditation. But first, just kind of remembering, we talked about this last time. We, we investigated patterns of our thinking because when we are exposed to all those anxious and stress triggers, it feeds these conditioned patterns of our reactivity. Um, if you were with me last month, we discussed it um, and that we can gain insight into these patterns through our meditation practice. Um, just being curious about them. Uh, as somebody mentioned, you know, going back to a situation so that, you know, those, those are triggers of past events as well. And they trigger uh, the fight or flight response, they trigger our stress reaction. They even, you know, may um, trigger stress hormones in the body. Um, but it usually brings up patterns of thought, conditioned patterns. Um, but remember, we have what's called neuroplasticity. And we can, with practice and repetition, change those patterns. And that's really what you're doing when you're, when you're practicing your mindfulness. So... That's kind of what it's all about. Um, and if you also, if you remember last month, we talked about letting it go. So that's one way to think about, you know, letting go of the, the stress and tension. And this poem, if you remember, is uh, from the, as you can see, the Tibetan teacher, Talopa. Um, but we practiced letting go last month, and Tara Brock says one way of understanding meditation is a letting go of habitual clenching thoughts, the clenching that resists emotions and pulls away from aliveness itself. Um, so we're going to try something a little similar, but today we're actually going to focus on letting be. So this is a quote from Sabine Selassie. Sabine is an instructor uh, that I came across on 10% Happier. I've been using that app quite a bit. They've got some great stuff. And um, so the quote, as you can see, let it go and let it be. The distinction is subtle, but crucial. Let it be invites us to loosen the grip of control, to trust life, and to make room for our deepest hopes for ourselves, for our life and our world. So um, what I'm gonna do today, we'll do, we'll do another meditation and um, this one will be, um, I'm gonna kind of combine a couple. So this one may be a little bit longer. I think we have time. So, um, Oh, I'll stay there for the moment. I'll stay and let it be. So again, take a moment to um, get yourself settled. Allow yourself to find a position that's both upright and alert, as well as easeful. I like that combination, upright, alert and easeful. And if you're comfortable closing your eyes, please do so. Or if not, just gaze softly down at the floor in front of you. We'll start by feeling our hands. 
and just noticing the sensations you can feel in your hands. Your fingers, thumbs, palms, just noticing. And if you can't feel many sensations in the hands, that's okay. Just um, noticing any feeling and maybe what you're coming in contact with your hands, you know, what you're touching, that sense of sensation. And it's not necessarily what your mind is thinking about the hands, but seeing if you can pull your attention into the sensations of the hands. And every time the mind wants to drag you to someplace else, some storyline about worry or concern or stress, see if you can let your hands be the primary focus. Take a moment to do that on your own, just sitting with the sensations in the hands. And if there's a thought or a feeling that's pulling your attention, letting go of that and Focusing back on your hands as the primary focus. Next, we'll do the same thing with our feet. So turning your attention, your awareness, your focus towards your feet. Sensing into whatever your feet are in contact with, any kind of pressure, contact, gravity, sensation, texture, Allowing yourself to land in the feet. And again, whatever the stories are that the mind has to tell you are secondary and the feet are the primary focus. Next, we're going to turn our attention to our belly and allowing our belly to soften. When we have any sort of anxiety or worry or stress, we tend to breathe very shallow or tight. So see what it's like to give permission to the belly to have space. To the breath to have space. Letting the next breath be received in a softening belly. You may notice the mind will come in with a storyline, with its ideas, what should be happening, a plan, a thought. And just see whenever that happens, returning to whatever makes sense to you. Maybe it's the hands, the feet. Maybe it's some deep breathing where the belly has some space. So check into what makes sense to you. Now, let it be actually has two meanings. Let it be, may we trust life. 
and let it be, may our deepest wishes come to fruition. You can think of this phrase as the attitude we're bringing to this session. Whatever happens this session, you can tell yourself, let it be. Just notice whatever is arising, sensations, thoughts, emotions, and let them be. Sometimes it can be helpful to use a question in combination with the phrase. So ask yourself, what's here right now? Noticing any thoughts, emotions, sensations, and then add, let it be. Practice that way for a little while on your own. When we develop the capacity to let our experience be as it is, we create a more centered and calm condition from within. From here, we have the ability to bring about meaningful change that is not coming from reactivity, but from our deepest aspirations. Let's try it. Bring to mind something you wish for yourself. Maybe it's more ease or better health or a new situation at work or in life. And notice any thoughts or emotions that are arise around this issue. Letting them be there without needing to push them away. Now imagine this wish or aspiration fulfilled. How would it feel to have this come into being? And you can say to yourself, let it be. And notice what arises when you do this. How does it feel to imagine this hope come into being? Let it be. Now we can aspire for personal change and we can also practice with our wishes and hopes for the world. Consider a hope you have for our global community, perhaps an end to conflicts, healing for people or the health of our planet. No wish is too small or too big. There's no wrong hope if it's rooted in kindness. So choose something that's meaningful for you. And imagine what this deep aspiration of yours would lead to. Allow yourself to feel its impact for you and for others. Know that imagining it brings even more calm into your life. And now add our phrase, let it be. Let it be. When we practice like this, we create a more collected and calm presence, making us more available for the changes we want to bring into the world. Let it be. You can open your eyes now if they've been closed and begin to move your hands and your feet. And remember, you can bring this phrase into any part of your day. So thank you for practicing with me as we end that. Let it be meditation. 
So again, thank you. What did you think? Any, any thoughts, comments? What was that like for you? It was a little bit longer than usual, I think. You're welcome. Good, needed. No one takes us a little bit deeper, right? You know, we think about our own aspirations and even just accepting things as they are. Um, that's that's quite a skill right there. If, the more we can accept things as they are, uh, we'll be much more in the present, much more uh, not buffeted about by all the things that normally buffet us about. So remember rain, uh, this is something we've talked about before. If you've taken one of the longer classes, I always kind of introduce rain. And it makes that whole concept of letting it be makes me think of rain. So this is kind of a quick reminder and an easy way to kind of um, bring us um, to you know, a practice that you might continue. And the RAIN practice is simply recognize what's happening, even if it's something you don't like or if it's something that's stressful, just recognize it, you know, name it. Sometimes that helps to name the thoughts, the emotions that are going on around it. Um, and then the A, and it's really the first two parts that are most important. The A is simply to allow it to be as it is. And we did that in the meditation. Whatever you noticed coming up around the situation that you brought to mind, we'll just allow it to be as it is. Because typically we, what we want to do is get rid of it if it's unpleasant. I mean, we want to get rid of it. We want to push it away, ignore it, stuff it, whatever. Um, or if it's really pleasant, you know, we want to hang on to it. We don't like it when it goes away. Uh, so even just the RA part of it, can be a helpful practice to get into. But with the rest of it is, you know, if you want to investigate it a little bit more, you're investigating the inner experience you're having. You're noticing those thoughts, feelings, and body sensations. You're being curious about them. You're not pushing them away. You're noticing where you feel this in the body. And then the end part of it is you can realize that you're not identifying with the stressor. It doesn't define you. You know, you can, you have some power to step back from it. And another way to think of that is, is very nurturing. And so it's a great way to take care of yourself. So that's rain and a good way to kind of continue with the practice. So um, here's what I would encourage you to do. Home practice, continuing three minutes minimum, you know, almost every day, if you can, daily-ish. Um, 12 minutes, remember, if I talked about this in our workshop on focus, and a uh, researcher, Dr. Amishi Jha, found that 12 minutes seems to be the optimal time of practicing, the time at which um, it's the minimum amount necessary on a regular basis to really get the benefits of um, increasing our attention and our focus. Um, you know, it's hard every day to do that. So even three minutes minimum or a short practice can really be helpful. Um, and then, you know, try to bring these concepts to nature, connect with nature daily if you can, even as an informal practice. Um, nurture, you know, it's, it's really important to take care of ourselves, to find some ways to nurture those ups and downs. And rain is, is one of the practices that you might do. And then again, just asking yourself, it's just really all about increasing our awareness. So, you know, what I, what I tried for a while is sending myself a reminder at random times during the day. What are you aware of? And when that pops up on my phone, just noticing, okay, what's going on? What are you aware of right now? So that's something you might try. Remember, we do the phone meditations. Um, and we also have a meditation line, which is in the blue box down here on the left, free recorded meditations. And then um, 
again, I pointed those out, but on our EFR website, Achieve Solutions, there's, there's about 30 different ones. So keep those in mind. And what I'll leave you with is this. Um, this is a scene from Florida a year or so ago. Nice beach scene. So thank you very much for joining me. That's it for today, guys. Um, any, any thoughts, feedbacks, comments, questions? While we're watching this peaceful scene is actually daybreak, sunrise, Daytona Beach. Whoops, it stopped. I guess I must have paused it. I was looking at the chat. Here we go. And I'm going to just let this run and you might just sort of absorb yourself, imagine yourself walking along the beach, listening to the waves. Turn that sound up a little bit. It's pretty quiet. By the way, I have a bunch of these on my uh, YouTube channel. Um, I actually have about, I would say, 20 or 30 of them, different one, two minute clips of nature scenes mostly. Um, that's a good place just to get a quick little break. It's on the YouTube channel where I post these. It's on one of the playlists It's called Nature Playlist. Well, that's it. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here and appreciate, always appreciate you joining me on these. You have a great rest of your summer. Stay cool. It's a, it's a lot easier today, right? Yes. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> 20 degrees. There. 20 know. degrees. <laughs> I think, I think it was 98 yesterday. It sure felt like 98 or 100. Yeah, today's 85, so it's, yeah. it's, I'm so grateful. A lot better. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Feel like we're, we feel like we're up in the mountains there. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Bob. Have a Bye -bye. great day. You know, I don't want to be my last day, so it was nice having you as given us all these um, webinars. Um, I really enjoyed it. 